So that particular potential giving rise to the antidiuretic hormone, antidiuretic hormone will leave the posterior pituitary. It goes by way of the circulatory system. I don't know if you guys noticed the vein. Uh, well, the blood supply. Okay, I don't know if y'all saw the blood supply. But it's gonna travel into the bloodstream. Now, the target tissue is the kidneys. So for this hormone, the target tissue is gonna be the kidneys. So, that ADH is gonna act on the kidney and what it needs to do make sure that that kidney conserves water okay so as the kidney carries out its functions it will reduce urine volume it will increase the osmolality picking up of the little electrolytes and stuff therefore that decreases those little electrolyte numbers in the blood all right and that Holding on to the water and returning it to the system increases our blood volume. And if we can increase blood volume, we should increase our blood pressure. If we can increase the blood pressure and if we can decrease the osmolality, what is that going to do? to the neurons picking up the information in the hypothalamus. Are they going to continue to fire or will they stop? stop. They will stop firing. And if they stop firing, do we stop the action potential? And if we stop the action potential, we stop the production of the ADH. Do they just, do they do the inhibitory, do they send? No, they'll just quit firing. They just quit. Mm -hmm. Yep, they won't have any information to fire with. And it's fast because that's a, is that? That's because that, because of it being the neuro? The neurotransmission. Okay. Yeah. It's the reason that it can be fast and it can start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. The other hormone in that posterior pituitary oxytocin oxytocin now used to be rather simple with oxytocin uterus breast tissue well they're kind of finding out that oxytocin is getting released maybe at some other times also okay but for the most part oxytocin and its release is going to be most important at the time of birth. All right? Now, this is the one hormone that is going to operate off of positive feedback. Remember positive feedback? Mm -hmm. And what does positive feedback do? It increases it. it feeds the cycle, making it stronger. Almost everything else is operating off of what type of feedback? Negative, Negative feedback. Oxytocin, egg and sperm meet, get pregnant, wait for the little itty bitty baby to get here, okay? Comes time for itty bitty baby to get here all right, a couple of things are going to take place, you know. Mom's going to lose a mucus plug. Mom's going to have, you know, be like, you know, just, you know, by that point in time, you know, you're waddling and everything else, you know. So you're like, okay, well, just whatever else is going to happen, let it happen. All right. And so you might be walking along and you might go, Ooh, that was interesting. Wonder what that might have been. So it might take a little while 
And then you might just be walking along again and it might go, oh, whoo, that was interesting. I wonder what that is. Did I have some gas maybe? You know, my stomach upset, did I eat something that wasn't very good? So you're gonna have a little bit long, you know, a little bit of time. And then all of a sudden, it's gonna be like, oh, oh, okay, maybe. How many months along am I? Well, yeah, I guess it could be that time, couldn't it? All right, now here's what's happening. So by the time, okay, cause the job, the goal, itty bitty baby, is a foreign object in your body and your body wants to dispel it. It has wanted to dispel it since day one, okay? And it finally is like, I get my chance, okay? So, we'll have some information between the uterus and some nerve tissue. And what's going to happen is, as we look at this posterior pituitary, once again, nervous tissue, all right, cell body up here in the hypothalamus, going to send its action potential. This time, we need to release the oxytocin, all right? So, if we begin to have a little bit of a stretch on that uterus, now remember, at this point, the uterus is just not a little teeny tiny part down there in the pelvic. Uterus is just going, okay? And it's like, woof, all right? So, gets a little bit of that stretch to it. And the body begins to pick up on that. The body picks up on it and goes, oh yeah, I get to get rid of it now, okay? <laughs> so, what it's going to do, it's going to send the action, it's going to pick up, send the action potential that's going to travel down here. The action potential that occurs here releases more oxytocin. Oxytocin goes on forward to say, hey uterus, I'm here to help. Okay? So that's why the next contraction got a little bit stronger. Because oxytocin's helping now. So we get another stretch on the uterus. And then the, that gets picked up. And it's going, oh yeah, man, you need more, you need more, okay, come on, I'll provide it, I'll provide it. Action potential, release oxytocin, effect on the uterus, make it stronger. Oh no, okay, you need it to be even stronger. Release oxytocin, act on here, until it finally gets to go and spit that baby out. So that's the point that we need oxytocin. And it's a positive feedback. It makes it stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm sure y'all have all seen the movies and everything of that woman at the end, okay? You know, it ain't a pretty sight, but it happens, all right? Now, the next thing that we're going to see for oxytocin, because egg and sperm meet, fertilization occurs, if the little baby tries, you know, if the body tries to expel itty bitty baby that's going to grow, but it doesn't succeed, that means mom needs to get ready to feed it. All right? So the next thing it'll affect is going to be the breast. Okay? So it will begin to start acting upon the breast so that we can have the food for the baby. So in the biggest function of oxytocin, it is to help with the childbirth and feeding itty bitty baby after it gets here. Now there's, there are other things oxytocin is being associated with, but um, one of the biggest that they seem to be finding that oxytocin production occurs is when um, your pheromones, you know, the armpit smell, your armpit smell good to him, and his armpit smell good to you, you know, y'all get attracted, okay? 
And so from there, you kind of like, you know, they say it gets produced like when you see them, when you kiss them and other things happen and that sort of thing. That it's a, it's a, it's gonna be like, because you know, when that stuff happens, the goal primitively is propagation of the species. And that's supposed to be helping you continue the species, which means you get pregnant. So okay. it produces the pheromones or it, no, 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 it produces oxytocin gets produced. So in other words, when you're there with the love of your life, okay, and you begin to be in close proximity yeah. to them, the it affects the release of oxytocin. So it's like a bonding chemical? It's like a bonding chemical. So men produce it too? Oh no, just no. women. Just women? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting though. Yeah, because I heard like sometimes a man can produce breast milk. Or something. Yeah. Uh, well, that's probably acting. Um. Very special stuff is occurring in the body for that. Um, and there are different things that will actually affect that production. But a lot of it is going to be focused more on the hormones that are in the anterior pituitary in the man. And cellular production can go completely haywire when that occurs. So now, that's our posterior pituitary. Oxytocin, antidiuretic hormone. Now let's look at some of the fun stuff. The pituitary hormones. Remember, releasing as well as inhibiting. All right? Now, hormones from the anterior pituitary. Growth hormone, GH, also known as somatotropin. Thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, TSH, ACTH, melanocyte stimulating hormone, MSH, beta endorphins, lipotropins, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, prolactin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is follicle stimulating like a um um, infertility drug? Um, is that, it, it might be something that they've manufactured for infertility. Um, I wonder if that's because what they Because follicle stimulating hormone is to go stimulate, for example, the production of an egg and production oh. of Sperm. So it could be something that they have kept up with and that's used in infertility. Our book only has six. Yes. Okay. Um, this is just one chapter. I just don't agree with everything in the book. Yeah. Which is why I am letting you know, okay, start at this page. But don't forget what I have on my slides also. Now, the hormones. Growth. Growth. Puberty. Childhood. Childhood. Why? Infancy. Baby girl. Itty bitty baby's gotta grow. Embryonic stage. Huh? And then embryo. Have you ever thought about growth hormone? Yes. Why? Um, I read a book and I was talking about 